Hey everyone, it's Paul Dysinger with Born to Grow Online Gardening University and I had a question come in on Facebook from Joan Tom Sterndale saying how can you get rid of slugs, Japanese beetles, and squash bugs in the garden? And actually a very similar one from Mary Jo Holmes, how can I naturally take care of those boring beetles that affect cucumbers and squash? Great questions. I mean, I, you've got to love these questions. Bugs, they're, they're almost everywhere and especially when you're trying to do things naturally, they end up in your garden and, and what do you do with them? A lot of times we call them pests, right? And so, you know, this is a, this is a huge subject and a lot could be said to it. But in, in the next few minutes, I want to first of all take you through just some fundamental principles to look at when, when you're talking about bugs and talking about dealing with bugs in the garden. There's some fundamental principles we want to look at first and then I'll share with you some personal experience and stories and at the end I'm going to give you some very practical things that you could do or that you could try doing in your garden. You know, if, if you have an infestation of bugs and it's, it's too late, you know, you've got to do something. Um, some practical things are going to be at the end of this video of that you could do to try and help with your bug problem. But first of all, let's start out with those fundamental principles when it comes to dealing with bugs in your garden. You know, there's two different ways that you could look at bugs and insects in general. You can either look at the bugs as a problem and you know, the solution is to fight them. Here we are, we get our we get all our ammunition and go out and blow up the bugs and if we can get rid of them, then everything's good and everything's okay. Now, let me, let me just switch over and talk about another way that you can view bugs, and that is you could view these insects as a symptom of a deeper problem, that maybe there's something deeper in your garden, a problem that goes deeper than just the bugs, and they're just, they're just the little messengers that are there telling you, you know, something's not right. Something's not right here in the garden. And, and to illustrate this, we illustrate it with our own bodies. I mean, we know that if we have a healthy body, then we are more resistive to diseases and we stay healthier. And it's actually, you know, the exact same principle when it comes into the garden. A healthy plant is one that is more resistive to bugs. And we've seen this clear as day in the garden. And so, then the question is, how do you get a healthy plant? Where does the plant gain its health from? And the answer is from the soil. That's where it takes up its nutrients. That's The soil is the food for your plant. And so really when it comes down to the foundation, the, the soil is the foundation of your garden. And so in dealing with bugs, if they're just a symptom, just a messenger set, telling you, you know, this plant isn't healthy, where do you want to turn? You want to look at your soil and find out, is there any way that I can build up the soil? Is there any way I can focus on making the soil better so that my plant can be healthier and therefore more resistive to the bugs and pests that come in? So number one principle is watch your soil. Find out if your soil is healthy and if it's not, you might want to start adding some compost, something to boost your soil, give your plants the nutrients that they need. Number two, the second principle here that you'll want to look at is biodiversity. You know, there's, there's good bugs and there's bad bugs. And to, to illustrate this, you know, we all lo we, we love honeybees. We don't like them when we get stung by them, but we love honeybees because they come and they pollinate our garden and it's a, it's a good bug, right? Well, there are bugs that um, feed off of each other. And so you have beneficial bugs for your garden and you have you know the bugs that end up eating your garden and those are the ones we don't like but nature has this balance between the beneficials and the ones that end up eating our garden up and for for instance where we are here in Tennessee we have a wasp that acts as a parasite to tomato hornworm so we have wasps that come in and lay their eggs on the tomato hornworms and as their little babies grow they end up eating the tomato hornworm basically alive and killing it and so you know, when it comes down to it, while we don't like the tomato hornworms, we don't want to necessarily just get rid of all of them because we do want the wasps. And if and and there's a balance there. And so, you know, you want the wasp to be there so that it can take care of the tomato hornworms for you. But if you get rid of all the tomato hornworms, then the wasp doesn't have anything to live off of. And so, so you see this balance and you want to encourage 
a, a huge amount of biodiversity in your garden, letting nature balance itself out. So those are the main two principles, your soil and biodiversity in your garden. And now just a couple stories to back this up. You know, I've personally seen good, healthy plants sitting right next to a plant that is just totally riddled and eaten with bugs. And you know, your question is, well, why didn't the bug go for the nice plant, right? You know, obviously there was some type of deficiency in the one plant that the bugs came and ate it. And my dad tells the story of where we planted a bed of spinach in a, in a hoop house. And what had happened in the hoop house is that all the topsoil had gotten pushed down to one end as they were leveling it off. So it had richer, more healthy soil down at one end and it had more deficient soil up at the other end. And we planted this bed of spinach and as the bed grew, you could, you could notice the difference from one end of the bed to the other. The one end was a little bit more yellow and sickly and, and the end that had the top soil, the plants were just growing beautiful, healthy, dark green spinach plants. But the interesting thing to note was as you came in and walked down the bed, we had these little bugs that were coming and eating holes in the spinach and the spinach down at the end where it was yellow and sickly was just kind of riddled with bugs. And whereas as you went down to the other end where it was healthier, the, the plants just had a hole here and there. And so just, just illustrating this principle of, of building up your soil, focusing on your soil. My dad tells one other story, specifically speaking to those boring beetles that Mary Jo Holmes, you were, t you were asking about. Um, we had a problem with those beetles with our squash. And one year we ended up putting compost on our bed and we ran out of compost before we got to the end of the bed, but we really needed to put the squash in. So we put the squash in and as it grew over time, as it produced fruit, there became a noticeable difference between how much of a problem we had with those little boring beetles in the section that had been composted versus the section that hadn't. And the section that hadn't ended up having a lot more problems with the bugs than the section that had. So now I'm not, sit, I'm not standing here telling you that if you go out and compost your garden, all your bug problems are gonna go away. No, you know, building up the soil can take time. So until you get there, you know, what do you do? Maybe you already have a bug problem in your garden and you need something that you can do right away. Um, uh, the first thing that I'll mention here is that you can use a thin row cover material. It's like a, it's like a woven cloth material. Also, you could kind of call it a frost cloth. Agrabon, I believe, is a company that makes them. And you can spread that over your plants. It's breathable and it can act as a physical barrier for bugs. Now this is something that you want to do when your plants are small. As soon as they start flowering, you will need to take it off so that, you know, pollinators can come in and pollinate those flowers. Um, but it is a physical protection that you can put on. And then speaking specifically to slugs, well, and I'll just mention here, you know, when you're dealing with bugs organically, you want to deal with them kind of on an insect by insect basis. You don't want just some chemical something that will take get rid of all of them because like I said remember we're dealing with a balance in nature and so when it comes to slugs there is a product that is approved called Sluggo and you can put that in your garden and it's very effective on slugs and another thing for slugs is that if you want to get into ducks ducks are a good thing for slugs you know they might have some other detrimental um, experiences in your garden with them but Ducks are good. In fact, there are some ducks on Bountiful Blessings Farm. So, ducks are a good thing. You know, when it comes to squash bugs and Japanese beetles, those are a little bit harder. They're a little bit harder to take care of. And, you know, we've gone out there, I've gone out there and physically taken them off of the plant. Um, I've heard of people kind of vacuuming them up. <laughs> I've never tried it myself, but you could try doing that. I, I've heard that they have, you know, commercial vacuums that help vacuum bugs up. but physically going out there with your fingers just with a, a jar of soapy water and, and picking them off can can help to a certain degree obviously you're not going to be able to get all of them um, another thing is a product called diatomaceous earth and the nice thing about diatomaceous earth is that it is razor sharp to the bugs um, exoskeleton and it'll cut into them and they'll end up drying out over time and so that's something that you can use and, and the good thing about that is it's not chemical it's a physical thing and so you know bugs don't create any immunity to it and it's not helpful it's not harmful to us as humans something else that i'll mention here 
is Dipel. It's another approved substance that you can use for bugs. Um, it's specifically for worms, especially if you're having worms on your brassicas, like your your broccoli and and cabbage, and uh, or on your tomatoes with tomato hornworms. What it is, it's a it's a bacteria that when the worm eats it, it ends up destroying the worm's stomach, and then the worm can't eat anymore, and so it ends up dying. So Dipel is another thing that you could use. And then beyond that, there's all kinds of traps and and ways that you can do it. I've heard of people making traps for their Japanese beetles. But again, like I said, you know, going back just a few years, my a couple of my cousins and my sister and I uh, had a, a gardening project that we did one summer. And we had a terrible, terrible infestation of Japanese beetles in our green beans. It was just awful. It was really, really bad. And the reality is we didn't really do a whole lot about them. We, we kind of left them and we, we never ended up setting up traps, I don't think, for them or, or anything. They, they did their damage. But what's interesting to notice is that over the years we've had less and less problems with them. And it's been the same thing with squash bugs. We have had, we have had terrible problems with squash bugs. I mean, I remember it was, it was, it was, it was absolutely, it was almost disgusting to walk through the, our squash beds because there were just squash bugs everywhere literally little baby ones it was bad it was really bad and over the years as we have focused on building up the soil as we have wanted to encourage and, and just basically have been allowing biodiversity nature to take its course it has seemed that things have started to balance out some and, and we haven't had the same amount of problems that as as we have in the past with squash bugs and Japanese beetles so it's something to know that over time things can change and just because you see a bug doesn't mean that you need to go out there and kill it right away because you don't want to imbalance nature. You do want that biodiversity to balance itself out. So, so there are some helpful hints, some, some tools that you can use. Hopefully, you know, we've gone over a lot in this video and if you want to feel free to go back and play it again. Get a, get a pencil and paper and write some notes down on some of these things. And if you've appreciated this video, um, do me a favor and share it with one of your friends. Go down and like the Facebook, my Facebook page, and leave a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your solution for bugs. What has worked for you in a natural way, in a natural environment, in your garden, with your bug problem?